Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. Happy Friday. So the Dragon Ball Tea series continues. So now what's going on is that the Ricky Smiley Morning Show is involved. So if you guys do not know, the other day Latasha went on to the show to basically state her side of the story and the brat ended up getting involved. Yes, honey, the brat tat 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 from So So Deaf. She ended up getting involved and basically having to, you know, tap Latasha politely on the shoulder and remind her of how, you know, the things that she witnessed when they were all on tour together. Remember, the great Lily from SWV said, of course, the brat is going to take up for escape. She's part of So So Deaf. So meaning that the brat was there to watch a lot of this stuff go down because So So Deaf, all the members used to tour together and things like that. And they've all known each other since they were, you know, kids. And so the brat was saying that, you know, there were points in time where Candy would look sad, you know, where Latasha was the leader and, you know, nothing moved if it didn't get by Latasha first and that Tamika would take up for her sister, right, wrong, or indifferent. I mean, the brat really had to remind Latasha and you could see Latasha's defenses going up. She definitely felt a way that the brat was holding her accountable for her actions. So I want you guys to go ahead and listen to this snippet. Go ahead and check this out. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, we are so happy to have you, and uh, uh, thank you for taking this interview. Uh, unplanned and at the last minute, uh, gracing us with your presence. You are a legend, and uh, let's get into it. Natasha, you know Brat, Gary, Maria, Rock, T, okay. Special K. What's up, y'all? What up, hey. 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 everybody in the building. What's up, Brat? What's All up? Right, so, so a lot has been said out there in the media about mm -hmm. you and uh, you know, you and your sister Tamika, and uh, we want to clear things up <clears throat> from your perspective. Uh, what happened and where did it start? Um, I'm not sure. It, once we started to film, everything started to go crazy. You know, um, like I tell people, I signed up to be celebrated. You know, all of us, to be honest, 30 years in the game, that's what it should have been. Um, there are so many things that, that I don't understand about editing and just how everything has kind of transpired. So all I can say is I signed up to sing. I signed up for for good stuff and it ended up not being that and I just wish I never would have signed up for this you know to be honest and with my sister she's always going to be my sister that's my family we go through highs and lows and everybody got peaks and valleys it's just right now we're going through it in the public eye um, and I just ask that people would allow us to do that without judgment and allow us to be sisters and, and, and figure this out you know so <clears throat> so now Latasha now this year you know who this is so I ain't got to introduce myself to you, you but know. Latasha now I, we've been following the show SWV and yes. um, Escape and what have you and stuff and the madness that's been going back and forth with you and um, um, Tamika with the $30,000 alleged mm -hmm. that you're supposed to have taken from her and your husband Rocky <clears throat> so my thing is did y'all take the money and I know you said um, in a report that you know to Get your sister back, you would give her back the money. And $30,000 is not that much money, especially with you and Rocky. So my thing is, did y'all take the money? Did you I, cash the check? I never said give something back. I said I wanted oh. my sister back. Oh, you and I said oh, if I it takes $30,000 to bring us back, then I would. Um, That's what I said. But no, it's it's a very delicate situation. And no, I didn't. we didn't steal anything from her. No, we did well, not. But why is she saying that? Why is she saying that? That's question. Because there, there was a video where she actually had the, the accountant on and the lady showing the receipts. Uh, there that, was an accountant uh, on. Uh, 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 if no, not, that was whoever, that was uh, that was Little Tamika Mama. Oh, okay, no, she's the white not lady. An yeah, that's Little Tamika Mama. That's that's yeah, no, she's that's, not. That's a, but Tiny she Mama. That, that all the chicks, all the chicks went to uh, went to you and your husband. That's not true. <clears throat> So one thing that Tamika's mama said was that uh, you, she alleged that you and Rocky changed the address to your apartment in New York versus her uh, house in Hampton. Did that happen? Um, first of all, my sister didn't live in New York, and no, all of us would stand with my mother, but no. 
Well, she said she didn't know who Edwin or Edward Bivens was, and she found out that was your husband. Okay, well, everybody knows it's not true. Everybody know what's not true. Edward Bivens, come on now. I don't don't know his name. Okay. I know his name. Well, she does. (laughs) Well, let me me just interject and say what I've been saying the whole time. Um, Even when Candy, Tasha, and Tiny came on Dish Nation, um... I've been around y'all since I was kids, and yeah. what I do know to be true is no matter what you did or said when we was little, um, your sister would definitely take your side, whether you was right or wrong. And vice versa. And I guess that's how sisters do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was So that made it like two against two, and, mm. and, and it made it, because to me, you always seem like, the, the person everybody had to listen to, I guess, because you was the oldest. But Candy always seemed to be the one that was hurt and slighted because they had to take your side and follow what you said do. You said Candy was hurt and slighted? Yeah, slighted because everybody <laughs> took your side because you kind of was the leader. Can y'all understand that when it's seven people on this reality show, and since day one I have been attacked on every level, the minute I said I wanted to do music, gospel music i have been attacked you've never heard anything about nothing about me i've been a a wife a mother i've done my job i'm in this industry so now it's coming where the television comes on and everybody's for tv oh i'm the bully too i'm a bully (laughs) i control my wife i tell her i don't have a brain i've been doing this before i I got with him. And, and Brad, you know me. I know you quiet over there now, but you know, I know me. Well, well, I know you what? What you, what you, I mean, what you, you saying? I'm saying what you, you know saying? me. You, 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 you know. Got I know what, what about you? you? I know what about you? You, you, you know. Exactly. Right. You so know so, so tell me what I know about you. I, what you, you mean? You know I ain't the guy to be running around here doing no rah-rah. I would think you would know that. You ain't never seen so, me So no what, no what do you expect me to say? I know you, but I don't know like that. What you mean? I'm acknowledging you on here. I'm saying, Brad, you know me. So you know I'm saying. You ever heard me do some BS out here? I, I don't know you like that. I don't know about your personal life and what oh, y'all doing in your okay. personal life. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about you and no mistress. I don't know about none of that stuff. No, no, no. I ain't That's talking not, about that. Okay. I ain't got no mistress. No, no, saying, I wasn't saying I'm saying what, what, you, I'm what you, you, mean? you know me. Shout I'm your pop, you know, like oh, I was Oh, yeah, saying, I know you from yeah, Chateau. Yeah, right. yeah, I wasn't saying it like that. I'm just oh, saying. Oh, I thought you were like, saying like I Oh, no, I didn't say you said nothing. Hey, what's up? I'm trying to, what's up? That's why I said. She's Chateau too, right? Yeah, we we from Chateau, definitely. Well, Tasha, you know what he's saying because that's your husband, but I didn't understand what he was saying because he said I know him like I had said something oh, no, bad no, no, about no, him and no. I had it. Oh, no. I mean, so I, I just want to make sure. I didn't okay. even hear that type well, of well, Latasha, I will. Come on. So yeah. Latasha, do you kind of feel like sometimes you're being bullied um, inside I do. of the situation? Because I, I definitely have felt bullied. I have. This whole show is about me. Because You it can't even like, talk you know, about the other girls. and as I, If I was them, I'd be upset. Because not once have they shown anything really about their lives. It's all been predicated on what people have said about me. I just want to sing. All right. So y'all just heard that snippet of the Brat and Latasha kind of going back and forth. And Latasha just planted off like she just had no idea about how Candy felt about anything. And, you know, she's being made to look like the bad guy and there's more to the story. But I'm glad that the Brat kind of held her foot to the fire and was like, no, I'm not going to let you kind of weasel out of this one. So now... If that's not crazy enough, today Candy decided to call in to the Ricky Smiley show and decided to speak as well. So Candy came on there to basically, you know, talk to them. And she was stating that Tamika would have never pulled out the receipts if Latasha didn't keep basically poking at the bear, you know, and that's why Tamika did that. She also stated that she doesn't know how much money exactly Tamika's old because I mean it's not Candy's job to keep up with the money situation as far as the sisters go but you know Candy kept it real and you know the brat also jumped in in this conversation and said that she had to be honest and state what she saw within the group dynamics growing up so this was a very interesting conversation as well y'all go ahead and check out this snippet Candy good morning good morning Hey, what you doing, riding around listening to the radio? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I be listening to y'all on my app. What do you mean? That's what's up. I was tripping. That interview was very interesting. <laughs> why you saying that? Why, 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 why was it interesting? Uh, what, what, what are your thoughts? Oh, 
um, it was a couple of things. I, I didn't understand what she, and she said. Everybody knew it not to be true when they were saying that his name is Edward Bivens because his name is Edward Bivens. So I was like, what is she talking about? Or, they, or was she trying to say Tiny Mama knew his name? I didn't I didn't know what she meant. Mm-hmm. So, Candy, what hurt me, I was saying by, y'all didn't send her the memo she said for the dress. <laughs> she still saying that? Yeah, she said <laughs> she didn't get the memo. Well, child, she didn't send her sister the memo that she was kicking off the record deal either. But hey, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> so, Candy, know. what are what are your thoughts on um, when Latasha said that she feels like she's being bullied right now? I don't even understand why she feels like. Okay, she actually did an interview the other day calling Tamika a liar and basically saying if it's true that she took the money to put post the receipts. And that is why Tamika posted the full video of her on YouTube showing receipts of where they had changed Tamika's address, signed the back of Tamika's checks, and deposited them. If she had not kept, you know, kind of like baiting Tamika, Tamika would have never done that. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people are like, why is Tamika posting it now? Well, Tasha asked her to. You know what I mean? I guess she thought Tamika wouldn't really show the evidence or whatever, but Tamika did. So it's just like, as far as anything else, it's, I hate when people do things or, you know, and, you know, and then they want to come back and play victim. It's like, you're the one that's saying some things and people are, and we respond. Right. <laughs> as simple as that. Now, you know? I, I, if, you, if you had to guess, Candy, how much, uh, uh, because Tamika said that she was being nice when she said that the check was for thirty thousand uh, dollars, she said she was just being nice by saying that. If you had to guess about how much money you think was stolen, if you had to guess, well, I don't know how many checks were going to them before she realized it, because basically, um, we received the, the checks kind of like multiple times a year, and so in the beginning when they first came, because we. We're late finding out, out about Sound Exchange. The first couple of checks were a hefty amount because it was like um, back pay, you know what I mean, for what they had already been collecting. Mm. So I can't give you an actual number just simply because I don't know how many checks they received on her behalf. Right. Oh my God. Brad, so, uh, you, my question yeah, to you, ahead, Candy, is you know, you've experienced so much success individually, not just as an artist, but also as an entrepreneur. We've seen Tiny do really great things. You think that, like, like Latasha feels like this is her time to shine as an individual, like she never got the opportunity that maybe you and Tiny had? Or if, 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 could well, that be I the mean, behind all of this? Well, I think at the end of the day, we all get the same 24 hours. So just because somebody else was able to accomplish something more, you know, it is what it is. Everybody get, you know, what comes to you is because it's what you work for. You know what I mean? Now, does she probably feel like it's her moment that she needs to do what she needs to do? That is possible. And I don't even think it's anything wrong with her wanting to do a gospel record. It's just for us. It's just every time. It's time for her to do a solo project. It's the attitude that comes with it. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, as far as her doing gospel, like, you know, we all wish her success. We hope that she does, you know, well or whatever. We're in a bad place, obviously. It's playing all out on television. It's playing all out on social media. But we've been having these problems. We just uh, that's so what I long. tried to say. I've tried to say that. You're but she right. tried to she You're tried right, to make right. it like Brett, you loved on me. That and that don't mean I never I, I loved all of y'all. That don't never mean that. I'm just saying everybody did have like a fear for her. And it, it it is what it is. Like I don't I ain't got to lie, Craig. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like, girl, and I told her I watched uh Escape Still Kicking It last night, some of the episodes again. And when you tried to talk to her and let her know that you've always felt like that. You've always felt kinda like, 
you know what I'm saying? Your feelings got hurt a lot. She, they yeah. always took sides, and you know, and and your how you felt got pushed to the back because Tasha was the leader of the group, and she's like, "Well, I didn't know that. I didn't know that." Yes, you did. I just watched it. Y'all talk to each other face to face. Y'all both was crying. It was a great scene. You know what I'm saying? But now she's saying she don't remember that. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I, I'm gonna just well, she can go back and watch the first season. I, that's what I'm saying. It's right there. <laughs> yeah, it sure. was the two of y'all. So. I don't know what. And yeah. then Rocky jumped on and said, "I know him. I know, I know of him, and I know him from being with R. Kelly and growing up in Chicago and stuff. But I don't know what he does in his personal life. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I can't vouch for anything that anybody does, or I don't know what goes on. I mean, I hear a lot of stuff, but right now the show is what's airing, and this is what we're going off of what we see. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> uh, uh, but everybody that's tuning in. For everybody that's tuning in, we got Candy Burris on the phone. Uh, and then we, uh, just for the record, we got some uh, clips when we were in the commercial break uh, 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 that we recorded because we continued the conversation during commercial in that part of the interview. Uh, I have not aired yet. Uh, we talked about uh, another six minutes. Uh, uh, so, Candy, will the group be doing anything else or is, is Escape going to be... Uh, Done. Uh, well, Escape okay. got a lot of shows coming up. We got, I mean, it's just the three of us without Tasha. So, like this weekend, we in DC. We got shows coming up all across the country over the next few months. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, right now we're just not in a place where, you know, Tasha will be performing with us. So it's just the three of us. We're going to still be killing it, still bringing it like we have been. We've been doing shows with our, without her for a minute. Oh but, yeah, we know we you, you know, gonna do that, Candy, for sure. So, so for Candy, sure. can, uh, so Candy, when uh, Lionel Richie left the Commodores, they got another dude that looked kind of <laughs> like Morris Day to fill in for Lionel Richie. Are y'all gonna be doing any auditions uh, for somebody to, you know, I mean, because the show got to go on? Um, to be honest, we don't really feel like we need to do that because realistically, Tamika can sing all her sister's parts, um, and it's no shade to Tasha, um, but. She can't, you know, Tamika is very capable of singing all her sister's parts. So, right. Candy, I'm not trying to be, be messy or nothing. Uh, would y'all even consider uh, letting Miss Juicy come out there and sing a couple of songs? <laughs> of course. Miss <laughs> Juicy, definitely. We got to get her outfit made. <laughs> so what would it take for reconciliation, Candy? Because at the end of the day, I mean, it's, you know, people feel like it's entertaining to see the back and forth. But I hear the pain in your voice. I hear the pain in, well, the concern, not the pain, the I concern say, in both no of y'all. Bo- yeah, voice. the concern, the okay. concern, no. because they're sisters. And as black women, yeah. you know, we want to see y'all come together. May, it may need to be a different version of sisterhood than y'all had before. But what would you say it would take for reconciliation for y'all to find just a peaceful resolve? I think it really starts with the sisters. You know what I mean? It starts with them. You know, they have to work out. They have a lot to unpack or whatever between them. And then conversations after that can be had. As far as Tasha and I, we ain't never really got along since we were kids. And just like Bray already explained to you, it's like, I'm used to this. You know what I mean? And I don't think she ever really cared when things upset me. But, you know, it's different when it's her and her sister. So if I I just feel like if the two of them figure it out, then later on, you know, we can all have conversations. But honestly, right now, everybody just need to take a break and and let some time pass. In space, yeah. Yeah. Well, Candy, do you think y'all will ever get together, back together again and maybe just do a gospel album together for y'all? Lord, well, what's going on right now? I ain't giving gospel, friend. <laughs> not, giving gospel. Not, not at all. <laughs> no. Not at all. You know, um, she says but, not giving um, gospel. Hey, you never know what could possibly happen. I just, eh, right now, I don't see it, to be honest with you. All right, honey. So y'all just saw that snippet. So now, I don't know if it's because Candy called in Um, Because people are dragging Latasha from her interview from yesterday. But as of 30 minutes ago, Latasha went live on Instagram and she broke down crying. Latasha has finally mentally snapped. 
And she's crying about just everything, how embarrassed she is, you know, the group's legacy, how they're just, you know, they're looking bad as black women out here. Um, That wasn't the intention of the show. She does apologize to Tamika about, you know, maybe not listening to her, not being there for her in the way that she should have been. But she's still claiming that she did not steal her $30,000 and that she has her own receipts. But funny enough, during this live stream, she didn't provide any receipts. (laughs) No way. No way. I want to see the receipts. Tamika provided receipts. Latasha did not. Latasha also went on to admit that she's in an open relationship with Rocky. Because as we all know, all his teas being spilled that he's out here impregnating people and having, you know, side chicks and everything else. So now she's admitting to an open relationship, which I find very interesting because this was not made mention on the show. On the show, they were a happy family. They've been married for 28 years. They have a son. Nothing was mentioned about this. So it's very interesting that Latasha is now being backed into a corner and she's having to admit this entire situation. So y'all go ahead and check this out. Mama didn't raise us this way. And I apologize to my mother as well because you have been scrutinized for being a mother. You were there when nobody else was, and you've always been able to get us together. And the way that I see you being dragged in this media, it it hurts me. Nobody wants to see their mother dragged in the media because of what they see depicted on television, which, by the way, everything that y'all see is not what it seems. It is not what it seems. And my mother and my sister and I, we have had a very strong bond. And to see that tarnished in an industry that needs to see love and support That bothers me. It angers me because that's not who we are. Painted in a in a picture that it's not. That's not who we are. You know, I apologize to you, mom, for having to sit and and watch and look at this, look at your daughters go through this and try to find a resolve and can't. For any mother that breaks that would break my heart if I had two daughters who are going back and forth and and the industry is eating it up and people like drama. This is not the drama that I signed up for. When I said I was going to do this TV show, it was to celebrate women. It was to celebrate two groups who have lasted and endured this industry. That's that's hard to do, y'all. It's hard to get through this industry and, and still have your integrity intact and still understand what love is and still treat people with respect. That's very hard. When you've seen, I've seen myself how people, I don't even want to say giving us the roses because you have to earn that stuff, but we worked hard to get to where we are. But to not have that celebrated to me is, has done an unjust to both groups. We talk about legacy and and things of that sort. And how can you have a legacy? How can it be fulfilled when somebody is sitting here, you know, painting a narrative that that is not even true? Do we have issues? Yes. Can we resolve them? Yes, but it it takes communication and and us getting through what we got to get through. You know, my grandmother is watching, 92 years old. I can't sit here and and, and tarnish even that legacy. I got to apologize to my grandmother for for her seeing me and my sister and us go through the things that we're going through right now. It's it's not fair. It's not right. Y'all didn't raise me to be this way. Y'all raised us strong. You guys raised us to have integrity and to pray. And when I tell you I've been on my knees praying, trying to figure this out and trying to work things out. um, My family is rocked right now. It is. It's hurtful. It is. Um. I can't find peace in this. And if it's anybody else that's out there who are going through, I, I, I know what it feels like. I know what the pain feels like. And for me and my sister, we're going to get it together. You know, we. I'm reaching out. I don't have the answers. I found out about a $30,000 allegation when I watched the TV with y'all. 
did I take my sister's money? I did not. We were going through so much 10, 11 years ago together as a family. It was one of the things that I can't lie. We were both at our lowest. We didn't have money. I, we, I ended up, we all lived, lived with my mother. And that's something that, you know, y'all will see on the show where we say that I didn't have anywhere to live. We didn't. And we pulled through. So when you when you talk about 30,000 that I don't know anything about, all I said is, can we get clarity about it? Because during that time, we we both were helping one another. I just need clarity. What are you seeing? What are you saying? Because I have my receipts and you have yours. But we need to sit down as, as sisters and not go through this. In the social media, like on social media, it's not good. We need to sit down and figure out what this is because we can get through anything, but we have to communicate. We have to talk to one another because you can't get through anything without that. And I've been convicted already of being a thief and I don't even know what you're talking about. You put up something online with Tamika. We both have receipts. We both have receipts. Let's just get through it. What is this? How do we maneuver? How do we get through this? Whatever it is, Tamika, we can resolve it. This is not nothing that we need to perpetuate and continue to move and make people feel away. This is us. We sisters. We've never not been able to talk about anything ever. And I don't feel like because of what's going on in the, you know, in this media that we should use this platform for to down one another or to try to make each other feel less than. That's not what this is. We're supposed to be family. And I want my family back. I don't care about nothing else. And I've always said that. I don't care about what people say. It's about what I feel like with my sister, how she feels. And I apologize to you, Tamika, if I didn't hear you. If I didn't hear your voice, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying my best to, to make it. I'm trying to weather storms in my own personal life. It's like, I'm not trying to negate how y'all's feelings are. It's like, I have to still have peace within. I got to be able to understand how to move. I don't have all the answers. Being a big sister, you don't have all the answers. Sometimes I make mistakes. I'm human. But with us, we have to resolve this. This cannot dampen or, or drag us out or make us feel like we don't love each other. We love each other. The love is never going to go. You Love doesn't just, you can't throw love away. You just can't throw it out the window because something comes on, you know, and you have a, a hiccup in the road. That's not what this is. I love you with all of my heart. With all of my heart. And when I hear people say, your sister had your back and we've had each other's backs. I stood up for you the same way you've st you stood up for me. And I, I would never, I won't apologize for that. That's what it is. That's what you're supposed to do. That's how we were raised. That bond can't be broken. Now, right now we going through these times, but at the end of the day, when I got my sister and I'm, I got my family, I still stand on that. That's, that's, that's everything. It's that and then the business. And that's why y'all see me looking crazy on TV. Y'all don't know that that was the very first scene that my sister and I shot with my mother. No, it wasn't four or five um, scenes later. It was the very first scene. So I'm upset. I carry my feelings right here. Everybody that knows me, they know that I can't, I'm not fake. I don't know what to do with that. That's, this is who I am. I can't hide from it. I can't shun it. I can't sit here and pretend that it ain't, this is who I am. So if y'all see me cry, y'all see me looking like this is because I'm in, I'm, I'm in my feelings. And I'm in my feelings when it come down to my family and we're going to resolve this. I love my sister. And can't nobody else talk about it. Don't call me talking about my sister. Don't text me talking about my sister. Do not DM me talking about my sister. Because we're going through this. It's just the fact that we're in the public eye. So many people out there now, y'all going through stuff too. It's just the cameras are not in y'all's faces. The cameras are not capturing the fact that you guys are going through far worse than what we are. And I'm not pointing fingers. I'm saying, don't judge us. Pray for us. Be there for us. In a way to where God gets the glory. It's not even about us at the end of the day. It's about the love that we have and what we show people to get through. And we're going to get through this. I'm trusting God that we will. And we will. We're going to talk to Mika. I don't know. I mean, I keep reaching out. Mama's reaching out. I'm going to keep reaching out till you call me, till we rectify whatever the situation is. We're going to get through it. I know we will. Um, and I apologize for anything that I didn't see, anything that I don't understand. I apologize to you for that. Excuse me, y'all. I apologize. I did not steal my sister's money. I did not steal my sister's money. 
Tamika, you know I didn't steal your money. And if there's anything that I can do to resolve this, I'm going to resolve it. To all those people that are out there who are judging me because of my relationship with my husband. We have been married for 28 years. I have been with this man for 28 years through the highs and lows. I've been at my worst. I've been depressed. I've been wanting to take myself out of here. He was the only one that stood by my side. And I'm not saying this to make it seem like, oh, he's everything. But at, he's everything to me and my family. He's everything to me and our son. And do we have problems? Are we perfect? No, we're not. Is he perfect? No, he's not. Am I perfect? I'm not perfect. I'm very aware. I'm very much aware of the allegations that are happening about him. I see everything as a wife, you know, you see everything, but with our relationship, you know, some people keep the fact that they have an open relationship quiet. They want to keep it private, but we have that. And for us to be judged or whatever by the things that people are saying, y'all keep judging. Y'all keep living. Y'all got marriages. Everybody ain't going to always be true. Things happen at the end of the day. Do I stand beside my husband? I know y'all think I don't know. I know everything everything I'm not oblivious to things my husband and I what y'all don't understand we do have an open relationship we have spoken about things that's my that is my private business but because I'm sharing my heart with y'all I'm letting y'all know please stop it I can't even think about the things that are going on now because I'm being attacked everywhere I go. I'm being attacked. I go to the radio stations. I'm being attacked. I go to this place. I'm being attacked. I'm being attacked because I said I wanted to do a gospel project, a gospel. I want to sing to the Lord and every other minute I'm being attacked. Y'all can say whatever y'all want to say. My sister, that's my family. My husband, that's my family. And I can't even get through the things that I got to get through because y'all attacking me. Honey. All right, y'all. Y'all just saw that whole video of Latasha breaking down crying. Now, I will say this. You know, as somebody who does editing every day, um, production can edit you to look a certain way. They can create certain storylines, ask certain questions, but they can only do so much. You also have to be willing to give them that. And her attitude on the show, I don't know if Latasha realizes it, but she comes off very off-putting on the show. Her demeanor, her energy, her spirit, just it, it's just anger, annoyance. You know, even in clips when they catch her rolling her eyes, production and editing didn't do that. You really had an attitude. You were really rolling your eyes. So I think she needs to understand while it's easy to say that, you know, this show is making them look bad and it's the editing you got to take ownership to your part, sis, that you brought a lot of that negativity. You brought in a lot of that weird energy, and they can only go off of what you bring them. Now, I also feel like in a way with her breaking down, I don't ever want to question anybody's pain because I'm sure this whole situation is extremely not only embarrassing but hurtful. Like I said, you got the daddy coming out speaking. You got Tamika bringing out receipts. I mean, the whole Scott family is out here looking, you know, kind of crazy right now with all this drama. And then everybody's dragging the mother because of her attitude on the show. You know they did. You see her acting like you don't know. Cut the cameras off. Was your mom angry because you put this on blast in front of camera? Yes. Because she don't want nobody to know that her precious daughter did this to her sister. So I get that there's going to be pain, and I feel bad about the pain that both sisters in this entire family is going through. But Latasha, sis, you need to understand that the only way that you can heal from this pain is to be honest about everything you have done wrong. It is called taking personal responsibility, and we all have to do it, myself included. I've had to take personal responsibility for mistakes that I've made within life, with family, friends, things like that. It's called growing. The only way you can get rid of the baggage, the pain, and the hurt is to be honest and admit you're wrong and then go about rectifying those wrongs. Because again, an apology is cute. 
But it's hollow if there's nothing behind that apology. If you're only apologizing to gain sympathy so that way the online audience can stop dragging you and go buy your gospel album, then that's not sincere. I believe people have empathy for her and her situation, right? But it's hard to determine if it's sincere if she does nothing to rectify the wrong. And I think one of the ways that you will be able to rectify this wrong is to admit your part that you played in the dismantlement of the group. Your attitude, the way you treated Candy, the way you treated Tiny. You've also thrown shade at Tiny. And to me, you and Tiny had the best relationship. But you've shaded her and her singing on different occasions in different interviews in the past. Mm -hmm. So I, I went know. into the studio. <laughs> yeah, I went in the studio. And then um, all I knew was he played the record and just the background. So we went in and did the background parts. And then after that, um, he was like, um, who wants to do the lead? So I'm like, I'm not singing nothing. So Candy went in first. And then she stayed in there for like four hours. And he came out. And he was like, that's not the sound that I'm looking for. That's not what I want. I don't, it's too hard. It's too rough. Y'all shady out here. I don't so appreciate it. So I promise, it. I'm telling a real story. Yeah, it's the truth. It's my truth. And, and then Tiny was like, I'll go in there and try it. So she went in and tried it. <laughs> I can't make this up. <clears throat> so she went and she went and tried it, and I sat outside for hours and hours and hours, and I kept thinking if Jermaine was here right now, he would cuss all of us out and say, y'all costing a lot of money. And so um, Joe comes back out. He was like, it's still not what I'm looking for. It's too, like, nasally. I need, I need a little something. And then the situation with your sister, to rectify that, you have to admit the wrongs that you did to Tamika and pay her back the money. Let's keep it real, y'all. This ain't $30. It's not $300. They're saying it's a minimum of $30,000 and could be upwards of $50,000. I'm sure you can have that money made within the next few months. Y'all probably have that extra money sitting in your bank account right now. I don't care if it's an installment. If you want to pay her $10,000 a month for the next three months, pay your sister back her money so y'all can move forward. Because obviously that money situation, not even saying that Tamika needs it. I think Tamika's fine. But when she was going through it, when they didn't have any money, y'all was living with, with the mama and she was pregnant and, you know, everybody was struggling. It's very hurtful to look back on that time. So she needs to rectify that situation and just pay your sister back the money and apologize and be very, very honest about the mistakes that you've made in this situation bringing up the mama and the grandmother I understand you're hurt they're hurt they're embarrassed but you know the reason why your family's being drugged is because you guys decide to participate in this circus which is called reality television had you guys not decide to go on the show all of these problems would be behind the scenes and nobody would be none the wiser so when you go on to reality television, you got to make sure that all the skeletons in your closet are hidden and they're not out there for the whole Internet to find out. Because like I said on the show, it seemed like her and Rocky, I don't know anything about them, um, but it seemed like they had a nice, healthy relationship. You know, their son's in college. They seem to be a happy, loving couple. He does come off a bit overbearing, but they, you know, she likes it. I love it. Right. But now she's coming out time out there in an open relationship. And I just, it's just really sad that so many black women that we see in marriages, whenever something goes wrong, all of a sudden, well, it's an open relationship. Where are the marriages that people don't have to be out here fucking other people and creating side children? Just like a few years ago when Monique would be on her soapbox bragging about her and Sydney's open relationship and I wanted an open relationship and, you know, open relationship is the way to go. And people were saying like, no, this is a deflection. This ain't cute. No, there's nothing wrong with a monogamous relationship. And she was very head fast about that. Then we fast forward to just a few weeks ago. She came out and said that she no longer wants to do an open relationship and she just wants to be in a monogamous relationship with her and Sydney. Well, okay, that's cute, but now that the toothpaste is out of the tube, are you sure he's going to stop creeping and, 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 you know, fucking other people just because you not want to be in a monogamous relationship? You know, I think at this point a lot of women need to stop settling, okay? You know, people be so desperate to keep a man and to say that they're married that they're willing to put up with any and everything. I'm sorry, you can't be out here singing gospel and promoting a Christian lifestyle and then in the same breath, 
all this stuff about thievery and bite, backbiting and, you know, everything that's ungodly is going on in this situation. Now, on top of that, you're adding an open marriage. Not a good look, you know, and again, people can do what they want to do. Right. But when she came on the show, she made it seem like this was, you know, a marriage and there wasn't a whole lot of issues. And, you know, she loves her man. And now we're finding out otherwise. And I just don't want women to settle because it's unfortunate that so many women will put a man in front of them, in front of their families, in front of their career. And then when it's all said and done, the man can move on to something younger and quote unquote better and start a whole new family. Hence, look at their daddy. Their daddy was out here talking about he got a six year old daughter. How do you have a six year old daughter when you got grown grandchildren and great grandchildren the same age as your daughter? So a man can always move on so don't lose yourself trying to keep this facade and you know I have a husband I have a man and the whole time he's out here doing you dirty and cheating and creating other babies and all this other stuff and you're supposed to just sit there and silently take it just so you can proclaim to the world that you's married and you got a man and all this and that you can have a man but is it a good man is he a worthy man and for what I'm seeing, if you have to now announce that you guys are in a relation in an open relationship, um, I, I can't respect it because I would highly doubt he'd be as cool with with Latasha out here smashing a bunch of different people and having babies by somebody else. So it's always funny that when it's a relation, when it's an open relationship, it always benefits the man. But trust me, if she was to go out here and find her a side dude and have his baby, Rocky would be nowhere around. He'd be out as would most men. Let's keep it real. So I hate when women push this open relationship like it's somehow benefiting them. No, it's not. It's just something that you say to yourself to, to soothe yourself at night when your man is out there fucking around on you and creating other life that, oh, well, it's an open marriage, so it's not a big deal. But you know damn well you don't necessarily have the same leeway that he does. Because again, even if he allows you to cheat and fuck other men, if you get pregnant, He's not nine times out of 10. He's not going to stand for that. Either it's going to end up in an abortion or if you choose to keep the child. Well, now you and the side dude can raise that child. I'm out. I've seen it happen so many times. So don't fool yourselves into thinking that the fix for a broken marriage is to make it open. Because when you open yourself up like this, you open yourself to all types of demons, Jezebel spirits and everything else. And now we see that. We see this Jezebel spirit that they allowed into their bedroom who has now put all their business out there. You know, I'm sure they want to keep this open relationship on the down low, but now she got to speak about it publicly because this Jezebel spirit is out here telling all their damn business. So the whole situation is a mess. Um, I hope they end up figuring this out. I can tell that Latasha is very hurt, but like I said, in order to move forward and truly heal, okay, I'm preaching now, and truly heal from this pain, and a lot of it is self-induced and self-inflicted. You have to be open and honest about everything. Everything that you played a part in. In order for you to move forward with these ladies. You have to rectify your wrongdoings. It's very easy to point the finger. But you have to look in the mirror and see the mistakes that you've made. Once you've done that. And you can take personal responsibility. And you can heal yourself. Then at that point. You can start trying to heal and mend these relationships with not only your sister, but the other two women in this group that you have also sincerely hurt. So on that note, y'all, thank y'all so much for listening. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thank y'all once again for just all the love and support on this channel. It means a lot to me. So make sure you guys like the video. Feel free to share the video. Leave a comment down below. I want to hear y'all's thoughts on this entire situation. I will talk to y'all later. Enjoy your weekend. Have a good Friday. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us in tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.